everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin, and welcome to another LEGO Harry Potter comparison video. So today we're going to be looking at the three variations that we've gotten over the years of the Hogwarts Clock Tower, so let's get into it. Starting off with some stats on each individual set, first we have set number 4757 Hogwarts Castle. This set includes 928 pieces and 9 minifigures retailing for $89.99 when it released in April of 2004. Adjusted for inflation in 2022, this set would cost about $135. Feels right for the size of that set compared to the other three. 15 years later, we would see this section of the castle return as set 75948. Hogwarts Clock Tower. This set includes 922 pieces and 8 minifigures also retailing for $89.99 but releasing in June of 2019. Adjusted for inflation, this set would cost about $100 in 2022. Even still have one of these at my local Kohl's. Here's a picture of that. And lastly, released this year, three years after the last, we have set number 76398, Hogwarts Hospital Wing. This set includes only 510 pieces and 4 minifigures retailing for $49.99 when it released March 1st of this year, 2022. With all that out of the way, it's time to start off our comparison by looking at all of the small side builds included between the 2004, 2019, and 2022 versions of the Hogwarts Clock Tower. Now, as you can see, we get probably the most substantial side builds when it comes to the 2004 clock tower where we actually got Gryffindor Tower and also this small piece of the gatehouse. Now when it comes to the build for the gatehouse I believe this is the first time and the only time that we've ever seen this made in Lego form. You can see we have some lanterns, some spots to place your Dementors guarding the gates into Hogwarts Castle which can open and close using some clip piece connections. And we also have that dark gray roof color scheme, which is really interesting to see for the time period. Now, looking at the build for Gryffindor Tower, we have the portrait of the fat lady represented for the second or actually third time in Lego form. We would never see her appear again after this. Well, we actually didn't even see her appear here. We just saw her portrait slashed up by Sirius Black, or at least Peter Pettigrew. When it comes to the interior of the build, we have a lot of smaller accessories like the Monster Book of Monsters very first appearance. We saw that again, both as a small promo and included with your Neville Longbottom from the Series 2 collectible minifigures. Leading up to the dormitories, you can open that up to take a better look at what's going on inside where you have two beds, a few potion bottles, and even a green book, which is exclusive in that color to this set. Personally, LEGO's interpretation of Gryffindor Tower, the dormitories, and the common room has changed a lot and has gotten a lot more accurate, but I think there's still room for improvement. In the 2019 set, we saw a Christmas tree, which is a pretty familiar build in the world of LEGO Harry Potter, at least starting in 2019. We saw this one in the Hogwarts Clock Tower. We would later see it in Advent Calendars leading all the way even up to this year. Hopefully we'll see another smaller Christmas tree pop up, get the building on the side all around just to get the lights and the snow on this little tree build. Also with this being the setting of the Yule Ball, we get two of these smaller tables with these ice sculptures and even some goblets on this one over here. We also have these little unicorn horn pieces being used as the legs, even though we do get a support from the very middle of these table builds. We would later see this again pop up within the 2020 advent calendar and hopefully not again within this year's advent calendar. I really hope we don't see another Yule Ball advent calendar this year. Another thing that I might as well get out of the way from the 2019 version of the clock tower is this other small side expansion area, which you can actually disassemble this twice. So then you can see that we have these Technic connections to connect this all together from the side of that version of the clock tower. Now, starting off with this section, which portrays the Yule Ball, you can see that we have this gear system, which we saw used from the LEGO Movie 2 sets during the time period, that you can spin around and have your characters dancing on the dance floor. I really love this play feature. It's unique to this set, and I'm really happy to see it included. You also have a small little fire in the very back and a lot of 
just decorative icicles. And then for the other section, you can see a lot of stickers being used from the outside and that dark gray for the roofs. As we move to the interior, you can see that we have the very first representation of the Prefect's bathroom in Lego form with that mermaid stained glass from the side. I really love that inclusion. That really made me think that we were going to get a second task set. Hopefully we'll see one in the future. It is something that I'm really hoping and waiting for. And then from the very top, we have something that I'll talk more about over the summer when I compare all the versions that currently exist of Dumbledore's office, which we'll be seeing a brand new version of this summer. And the winner for the most accessories included is the 2022 version of the Hogwarts Hospital Wing, where we actually have some brand new exclusive prints for Skelly Grow right here. Very first representation in Lego form. Really cool getting that. I love potion. Some other different potions and some chocolate here. We also get a bed curtain with two stickers on these two by three tile pieces. Really interesting build up for that. A small chair that nobody cares about. The open winged owl in a brand new color that sand blue though hopefully we'll see it in other colors over the summertime. A new print for Birdie Bot's Every Flavored Beans, a small lantern, and also a new mold for the top of this trunk, allowing us to put accessories on top with those stud connections. And lastly, you get two out of 16 collectible chocolate frog cards included in this new version of the Clock Tower, continuing our trend from last year, celebrating the 20th anniversary of LEGO Harry Potter. Here's a look at all 16 that you can collect throughout all the set. Also, here's a look at how many you should have in your collection if you've bought every single LEGO Harry Potter set to date, and one extra Hermione Polly bag. Wow, just look at all three of these sets next to each other. It's really amazing, and something that I never really would have imagined to have in my collection, all three versions that exist currently of the Hogwarts Clock Tower from 2004, 2019, and 2022. Now, as you can see, well, you probably definitely can see this, we have a size difference where our largest version came out back in 2004, and we've slowly just been getting smaller and smaller, but don't really worry about this one. We might actually be seeing somewhat of a expansion to it. We'll have to wait and see if that actually comes out or not. But talking about the exterior for all three of these builds, another thing that you might notice as something really interesting is that the 2022 version of the Clock Tower is our first representation with the sand green roofs that we know and love from back in 2001. Now yes, we might see a little bit of sand green being used in the 2004 version of the Clock Tower, and we also have that little bit from the very top of 2019, but we actually get like the full dark gray treatment for 2004, which really surprised me that LEGO went that direction, and we have the dark gray look that we actually saw introduced back in the 2018 through 2021 wave. Another interesting topic is gaps or no gaps. We have a lot of big gaps shown from the outside of the 2004 clock tower. You see them also from the very side of the build compared to the newer versions that don't feature as many well you do sort of get that little entryway but you don't see any gaps in any of the newer variants lego has been really great lately by not including these larger gaps that we saw in a lot of the earlier harry potter sets especially in that 2001 through 2002 system wave we have two prints introduced specifically for the face of the clock tower. We have one that was introduced back in the 2004 wave where you can see this gold highlight behind the numbers, which are actually only ones and twos for some reason. I guess they decided to go that direction. So then when it's spinning, it's just kind of like a ramble of different numbers compared to the print, which is actually the same between both the 2022 and 2019 variants. We actually get some specific Roman numerals used, which I really appreciate LEGO's attention to detail. And another interesting thing is that we actually have it printed on the back side of the dish piece compared to the front side that we saw in the 2004 set. We also see the smaller clocks above the main clock face represented with three different prints. We get exclusive prints for the 2004 and the 2019 version, though for the 2022 version, of the clock tower we see a print that's pretty common well not really too common in various city and direct-to-consumer modular buildings 
And lastly, for the exterior, I just have to talk about the inclusion of an entrance hall or not. Definitely the winner has to be the 2004 clock tower because it really goes all out when it comes to some of the features included. Not only does it include the front doors, which is missing from both of these newer versions, but it also features the pendulum, which can actually swing with a special gear system and also the gate that can raise that's hiding behind the doors, which is all controlled as the face of the clock spins. Now, my only complaint for that set is that the gear system is really hard to navigate compared to the newer sets where you actually can see physically where you can turn something to make the hands of the clock move compared to actually having the whole face of the clock move you can have the hands move which actually kind of makes a lot more sense compared to printing them on but that's really my only complaint when it comes to the newer variants though we do somewhat get an entrance from the front of the 2019 version of the clock tower that isn't what i want for the front of the clock tower and even though I really love the look of the front of the 2022 clock tower it's not accurate hopefully lego watches this video to know that we want a more accurate front for our clock tower like the one we saw back in 2004, though please at least wait another 2-3 years to give us another clock tower. I really don't want another 3 year gap. I mean, it is okay a 3 year gap, I would like maybe a little bit longer, but there's not really too much you can do about that. Flipping these around and looking at the interiors, I don't really think any of the interiors of this set are that accurate. Maybe the 2004 one is slightly, but not not really because we have a lot of just weird things going on. Like they are trying to represent Dumbledore's office at the very bottom level, which doesn't make too much sense. And the divination classroom just doesn't really work where it is. And you also have like somewhat of a piece of an owlry. I guess they were just trying to go for a general Hogwarts representation as this was really the only Hogwarts set that they had available at the time. Now for the interior of the 2019 set, we have somewhat of an entrance hall, kind of, where you have a trunk and you also have the weakest representation we've ever gotten of the Goblet of Fire, though still our very first representation of that in LEGO form. We also have Mad-Eye Moody's classroom on the second level featuring a sticker that we'll later see return well slightly different within a Hogwarts moment set for Moody's classroom. This is definitely a great representation with the dark detectors, the glass case that's supposed to have a spider in it. And lastly, from the very top, we have our first representation of the hospital wing, which we actually see represented for the main feature of the newest clock tower that released this year in 2022. Compared to the newer version, we have a sand green look for the beds compared to the lighter blue used in the newer set. You can also see that we have a similar build for the bedside tables, and also we have some lanterns on top, which are a little bit smaller just to fit in this particular room. And also we have two bed curtains separating the beds, and of course some studs for your minifigure's legs to sit on or lie down as they're in the bed. Now the very last feature from the inside that I wanted to talk about when it comes to all three of these is the gear system. Now the gear system is probably most notable in both the 2004 and 2022 versions. In the 2019 version we get a lever or sort of like a spinning handle that I appreciate as an obvious gesture as a way to change the time from the front of the clock. But really when it comes to the inside of the clock tower, we're meant to see all of those gears. Now you may be thinking if Lego made a set where you just had a bunch of gears and also just the walkway behind the clock tower, that would be really boring. Well, yeah, yeah, it would be, but then again, it would be a lot more accurate, and I bet a lot of people will still appreciate that compared to giving us just random rooms within the clock tower. And to wrap things up before my final thoughts, let's compare some of the minifigures included. To start off our minifigure comparisons, first we have Harry Potter, the boy who lived. We have our variant from 2004, 2019, and then 2022. I also put the one from 2019 just so then you can take a better look and compare the dirtiness and then the clean torso pieces front. And back for these characters, sorry for the turn squeaks. But there's a better look at the torso printing for these three variants. We don't get any torso printing for our 2004 characters because that's not something that LEGO really did back in the day. You can also see that we have the stick piece for the wand compared to the wand element that was introduced back in 2018. 
And then we have the same facial expression across the board for our year three and four versions of Harry, though we have the different piece to represent year four there. Next, we have one of Harry's friends, Ron Weasley, from 2004, 2019, and 2022. Again, we have that variant from the Hagrid's Hut Buckbeak's Rescue set from 2019, just to compare the torsos, where you can see that we have a little bit of a red color right there in the neck area of this 2019 variant, which I'm led to believe that that is the torso piece used here. I would have preferred if they included that same dark red torso for the 2022 variant. You can also see that we get the one white leg to represent the cast compared to the mid-sized legs that you see just plain for that 2019 variant. Same facial expression across the board for the year three and four variants. We also have the hair piece that was introduced in 2018 for the years one through three versions of Ron, the year four Ron hair piece, and then compared to the one that we saw all the way back in 2001. Spinning us to the back of these characters, here's a quick look at the back printing between those three. And again, no back printing for that 2004 variant, just because they weren't able to do that back in the day. Next up is Hermione Granger, with some of my favorite variants in this selection. We have our 2004, 2019, and 2022 variants, along with the 2019 version from the Hagrid's Hot Buckbeaks Rescue, where you can see that we have the Time Turner on the shirt here. And we have the Time Turner as a separate print for the 2022 character. We also get another separate accessory of the cast in addition to her wand, which is in the same color. Same facial expression across the board, same hair piece that we saw introduced back in 2019. And then we have the special hair piece that was introduced also for her character in 2019 for her Yule Ball variant. Another interesting thing to note is that we haven't yet gotten a Hermione minifigure with her regular school robes with a time turner. That's something that I would really like to see over the summer. Maybe we'll get lucky and see that. Again, just spinning around to the back of these characters so you can take a better look at the back printing. I will remove the hair pieces so you can get a better look at all of those back prints there. One thing that's missing on the older character here that I never noticed was missing is the hood that we actually just got on the 2022 variant. I think it's really interesting that the older minifigure doesn't have the hood print, but this one does. I originally wasn't gonna bring all these characters out, but here is every version that currently exists of Draco Malfoy in his Quidditch uniform. We have our version from 2002, we have the one from the 2004 Clock Tower, the one from the 2010 Quidditch set, and then the one that came out back in the 2018 collectible minifigure series. Now, one interesting thing to note is the fact that all of these versions, all these older versions of Draco, all came with a black broomstick, but the collectible minifigures variant came with a dark green broomstick. I don't know why they gave him that special unique color. It wasn't even accurate to the broom that he was riding. But putting that aside, when it comes to the uniforms here used back in 2002 and 2004, we have the same exact torso printing and also the same exact facial expressions there, just one printed on the yellow flesh tone and one printed on the lighter flesh tone. Again, I have to complain when it comes to the newer versions of Draco that we get this yellow hair piece compared to this tan color that I think works a lot better for Draco Malfoy. And lastly, I did want to mention the fact that Lego has really been coming far when it comes to Quidditch uniforms compared to the ones that we got all the way back in the day, which were in this full regular green color. I think the dark green works a lot better. You even get the white legs. The only thing that's really missing now for Quidditch uniforms is probably arm and leg printing, like including the shoulder and knee pads. That would be really neat to see sometime in the future. And then here's a look from the back where you can see all the different capes. We have a felt cape being used for the 2018 variant and then the old style capes. For all of these guys, the only ones to feature any back printing is the one that we got back in 2018. Another rather prominent character in Harry Potter is Professor Albus Dumbledore. We have four different variants in front of us from the 2001-2002 wave. 2004 Clock Tower, 2019 Clock Tower, and then the one from the 2018 Collectible Minifigure series, just to get a quick comparison between those hat pieces there. You can see that we have the same printing being used for the 2001, 2002, and the 2004 variants of Dumbledore. We just have a switch when it comes to the color scheme, where we have this brighter purple compared to this darker purple, the first purple introduced, and then we have the yellow flesh tone compared to the light flesh tone there. And then, of course, who can forget the change in the light gray, dark gray, and 
brown colors that we saw back in 2004. That's another really cool thing to note when it comes to those minifigures. Again, Dumbledore has been getting more and more accurate over the last couple of years, especially all of the Richard Harris versions of Dumbledores that we've been getting, where we have new recolors and molds for beards and hair hat combos, and even these skirt pieces are really nice with the printing from the front and from the back of at least that Yule Ball variant. Now quickly removing all the beards. You can get a much better look at the torso prints, especially for the 2001, 2002, and 2004 variants of Dumbledore, where you'll notice that we have the yellow bear chest on both of these characters. Another fun thing to note about the 2004 sets is the fact that Allegra was originally going to release all of those sets using the yellow flesh tone, but very last minute they changed to the light flesh tone that is now most prominently used in licensed themes. Additionally, I did want to mention that I do prefer the printing for the 2004 face over the print that we saw back in 2001. I just think the colors work a lot better for that Dumbledore, and I might as well just spin them all around so you can take a better look at the back prints there for at least the Yule Ball variant that features that double-sided facial expression that you'll also see on other variants of Dumbledore in the future. Another minifigure that I can show you all three versions that currently exist is Professor Sybil Trelawney. We got her first back in the 2004 Hogwarts Clock Tower, then again in the 2018 Collectible Minifigures series, and most recently again this year in 2022 within a Hogwarts Moment set. Now when it comes to her outfit, they are all completely inconsistent. My favorite probably being this blue one, even though it's probably the least accurate to the films. This is more of like a book reference minifigure. When it came to Lego designing sets back in the day, when the movies were just releasing, a lot of what they went off was descriptions from the book, and I really love how that figure came out for that reason, though again, the color scheme just isn't right. I don't like the facial expression. The hat is just a weird and interesting inclusion. I definitely prefer the one that we saw back in the 2018 CMF the best. You can also look at all the detailed prints that we have between these three characters for the skirt pieces and the legs there. This minifigure is meant to be a representation of this outfit, but with this brown cloak on instead, which I think is really interesting. Lego trying to go for a little bit of change within these Hogwarts moment sets when it comes to the outfits. You can take a look from the back here, where you can see that we don't get any printing on the CMF variant and the 2004 figure, but we get some back prints on the most recent figure, and I'll also remove that so you can take a better look again at the alternate facial expression that's included for the 2022 variant compared to the one facial expression that we see for the 2018 minifigure. And to wrap up our minifigure comparisons, lastly, we have some of the Dementors of Azkaban, all three representations that we've ever gotten in LEGO form. The originals from back in the 2004 wave, the ones from 2010-2011, and lastly, our most recent representation that we saw back in 2018-2019. Maybe we'll get lucky and see some more Dementors over the summer, or maybe even a new incarnation of what they'll look like in LEGO form. Now when it comes to the design of all these, we have the pogo stick design, as I like to call it, for the 2004 and 2010-2011 variants. You can see that clearly used right here. I'll flip up the capes, where you'll also see that we get that skeleton body being used. One using the battle droid arm buildup, and then the other one using these flexible skeleton arms, which is really interesting to see them used back in the day. You can also see that we have a lot of dark gray being used for the cloak for the old variant, and a lot more black being used for the two more recent versions. Another thing to note yet again is that this is mainly based off the description from the book, so it's really interesting to see LEGO's direction with the Dementors back in the day compared to what they did in the future. So overall, these three sets show the progress LEGO has made over the years in terms of color usage and building techniques, though the newer versions have a lot of small accurate details. I feel the newer sets have lost the size that most people expect to see when it comes to Hogwarts. Ranking these three sets from worst to best, I unfortunately have to place the 2022 set in third place, despite how much I love the figures and all the accessories, and the interior is our best hospital wing that we've seen so far. It just doesn't deliver an accurate representation of the clock tower. 
In second place, I put the 2004 Hogwarts Castle, as it was a revolutionary set for the time period with its use of color, but a lot of the building techniques and the figure designs are outdated and the interiors are just plain inaccurate. What saves this set for the most part is the exterior, where we have our most accurate looking clock tower ever, and the gear system and the swinging pendulum and the raising gate of the clock face turning is just the cherry on top. And this leaves only one choice for number one, and that's the 2019 Hogwarts Clock Tower. And not only was this set made to fit together with other sizable expansions, but it delivers a decently detailed interior that may not be as accurate, but features a few firsts for the theme. I do have to say I was surprised when it turned out to be representing the Yule Ball, considering this particular location is much more known for Prisoner of Azkaban. The exterior, slightly better defined than the 2004 representation, is missing a few key features, but at the end of the day, they got the clock print right and an easy working gear system that is very much appreciated. So yeah, that's all for my comparison of the Hogwarts Clock Tower sets. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below which of these sets is your favorite. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you next time. Bye!